And we are back. Pokemon Pearl Hardcore Nuzlocke, the run continues. We have found ourselves at the Valor Cavern here. You go to the three main lakes in the region, and you have to fight off Team Galactic here. We take on Saturn. He sends out his Kadabra. We've got our Machamp. I didn't know which Pokemon he was going to start with, so we're just going to pivot to the Gyarados. Not too many issues there. We do eat a Psychic. That's pretty painful. And we are slower than the Kadabra, so we have to eat another Psychic really flirting with crits there. So we're going to have to get the Gyarados to safety here. Going to teach Machamp Cross Chop while we're at it. And he's got two more Pokemon. Bronzer comes down. Again, it's not the fully evolved Bronzong, so not nearly as scary. And we're just going to repeat what we did in gym number six and just use Surfs with the Gastrodon. Bring this little coin flip guy down. And that only leaves one Pokemon from Saturn here. It is Toxicroak. Very, very offensive in nature. It hits us with a mud bomb and Gastrodon responds with a better mud bomb. So really good stuff there. Saturn is down and I do believe we have to go uh, give Commander Mars a revisit battle here at a different lake. So let's go check in and see what happened there. So then we find ourselves at Lake Verity. We're going to help Dawn out here and take on Mars. We haven't seen her in quite a while. She's still got her big per ugly. And let's see if we can beat her again without losing anybody. So Goldback comes down. We've got the Staraptor. So much speed, so much damage. Almost one shots the Goldback with a critical hit aerial ace. Two will do the trick. No problem there. Mahiru has been an absolute staple this run. Uh, Staraptor might be the best starting bird that you find in the early routes. Just absolutely ridiculous. But anyways, just go for the close combat against the Bronzer. Not even afraid. And we're just double down. So now we are down two procs of special defense and physical defense. So I could have risked it all there. But if Perugly somehow outsped, then we would have lost, honestly, my pride and joy of this run. So we just swap into the Machamp. Eat a Slash, no problem. Foreseeing the fact that Perugly was going first, we opt into Revenge for massive damage and it one-shots the big kitty. You'll love to see it. So that is two Team Galactic Commanders down, and we're either on to another one or maybe some encounters prior to the seventh gym. Let's do this thing. All right, so next we find ourselves hiking the long, long snow trail up the mountain to Snow Point City, where that third lake is located. So here we run into a Snover for our first encounter, and we're using our Torterra to just to whittle her down a little bit to get her into Ultra Ball range. And right there, first try, no problem, added to the roster. All right, for our next first encounter in between the 6th and 7th gym, we find a Noctowl up on the Snowy Mountain. And it is actually giving my team quite a bit of trouble here. It chunks the Torterra. Then it's going to chunk the Gyarados here on top of the hail just chipping away. And it does not want to get in the Ultra Ball. So we're just going to have to keep kind of swapping around until we can secure this first encounter. And again, even if you never use this Pokemon or plan on using them, it's always nice to have a few reserves in the box just in case some really uh, bad stuff occurs. Um, speaking of which, I haven't lost anyone since that Shinx, um, and we are looking really good. So we are on our way to the 7th gym. Let's ride this momentum. Let's keep it going. And the final encounter prior to the 7th gym is going to be the Sneasel. We're still in that snowy mountainside here, and let's see if we can catch her. Absolutely. So we added 3 to the PC. Good stuff. Let's go take on that 7th gym leader. Let's do it. And we have arrived at the 7th gym here. Candace and her 4 ice types. Well, really, 3 ice types. She also has a Metacham in there to give you some issues. But we're just going to lead with our fire horse here. And we've got two fighting types to back us up to break that ice. And then we got some other Pokemon as well in case we need to swap into them. But with these main three, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So without further ado, let's just dive right in and see if we can beat Candace without losing anybody. Again, death count is only at one. Feeling really good about that. I think the Platinum run I did a long time ago really helped me navigate this run. So I knew kind of what to look out for and any hurdles that we needed to overcome there. So Snover comes down. We send out our Rapidash here and the hail from the snow warning already is a going and we just got to watch out for that chip damage. It does add up, but honestly, 
We could ensure the kill with two embers, but really we have the big, the bad fire blast, and I'm feeling a little bit risky. Let's just go for it. 15% chance that it's going to miss, but if it touches really any of her Pokemon, maybe even the Metacham, they are just not going to survive, but especially this little girl and the Obama Snow. So really good stuff. One down, three to go, no issues there. And who is going to come out next? I'm very curious. It is the Obama Snow. Wow. Looks at the fire horse and says, hey, I dare you. I absolutely dare you to go for a fire blast and let's see if you can land two in a row. And I am going to call her bluff. Let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. Mito drops back, hits the fire blast. And I do believe Candace's ace is going to have to pack up and go home for the winner here. Beautiful stuff. Four times weakness is just so tough. It is really tough to get around sometimes, especially for a bomb of snow, since it's a fire weakness. Oof, that is just really tough. So there we go. Only two Pokemon left. We have the Sneasel and then the Metacham. So I think we all in on Fire Blast again. Sneasel's probably going to be faster. We just got to watch out for a quick attack or a critical hit faint attack is what i was trying to say there just watch out for that but other than that i feel like we're looking pretty good it actually goes for the slash it's going to do a little bit less than the faint attack but had a much higher chance of critting so i respect that but this fire horse is just ridiculous sees right through the hail is unfazed and just hits three fire blasts in a row that feels good it feels good to have rng in our favor i like that I can get behind that, and I am not expecting a fourth Fire Blast to connect, honestly. And if we don't one-shot the Medicham, I do believe we die. Now, I am a little bit scared that it will bulk up while we swap out, and that would be pretty tragic. But... Let's see here. If it does bulk up, that is physical defense. So we could actually send out Goshi, our giraffe, and go straight for the special since it'll be neutral. Um, and then it can only hit neutral fighting type moves, although we probably will be in crit range. To where Gyarados' Intimidate is actually pretty nice here since it'll cut down on the attack, especially if Metacham goes for the bulk up. So... I think Gyarados is the safer play. Let's do this. Let's try to keep the death count as low as possible this run and get that Intimidate down. Does it go for the bulk up? It goes straight for the damage. I did not give Gyarados a Paralysis Berry, and I pay the price. I didn't even think about that. I really honed in on a Bomb of Snows, uh, Grass Whistle, and Swagger. I didn't even think about the Paralysis from the Force Palm. Um... So that's really tough. I can go for an Aqua Tail or a Dragon Rage, hoping that we don't get paralyzed. I think since we're already out here, we go for it. Now we are going to pay the price. The bulk up is going to start coming down here and it's going to make swapping in and out a little bit tipsy. But Cruel gets through the paralysis with a massive Aqua Tail, getting Metacham into a nice range here. And okay, with the hail chipping away, this is the only Pokemon that can get hurt by her hail, which is nice. Um, now, I'm just a little bit nervous here because Aqua Tail can miss. And um, we're also paralyzed. I'm looking at our Metacham's health here. And if it was in that same position, I do believe that is less than 40 HP. So going off of that, using the ruler here for the win, I think we opt into Dragon Rage and just roll the dice. I think we just roll the dice because now bulk up, if we even break through the paralysis, we still have a chance of missing the Aqua Tail, and then it might not even kill because of the double defense rage, and the Gyarados breaks through the paralysis, gets the Dragon Rage, is it enough? And it absolutely is, some very fun calculations there, and the team is able to maneuver this fight and just make it out alive, really good stuff, so proud of the Gyarados, that was fantastic, you'll love to see that. And for as many times as I ban Gyarados because they're so overpowered, it is really fun to use, a very fun typing, a very cool Pokemon. And I'm just glad we have one on our team. So we'll see if Gyarados completely flexes in the Elite Four if we make it there alive. 
but I'm having a lot of fun with this run, so let's just keep it going. As always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you on the flip. Peace.